It's too early in the morning. <laughs> Thank but... you, uh, Madam Speaker. I rise to support this bill and move the amendment circulated in my name that all words after that be omitted with a view of substituting the following words. Whilst not declined to give the bill a second reading, the House 1 notes the government has made it more expensive for Australian students to undertake tertiary study and has pushed students into taking on more debt, and two, calls on the government to ensure rural and remote students have access to quality and continuing education. And as I said, uh, Madam Speaker, that amendment has been circulated in my name. Every Australian should have access to a world-class education, no matter their postcode. All Australians should have the opportunity to undertake further study and uh, further study should they choose to do so. We know that rural and remote students face extra and sizeable hurdles in undertaking high schooling and post-secondary education. In fact, uh, Madam Speaker, I have just met with the um, Isolated Children's uh, Program, and uh, this was one of the issues that the group of women I spoke to raised with me. Boarding accommodation and living expenses and travel represent some of the major challenges for regional and remote students. We all know too well that accommodation can be expensive, especially in inner city and suburban areas, and affordable accommodation can be difficult to find. Travel from remote and regional areas can also be costly, but we also recognise that travel to reconnect with family can be important for education success and successful transition into post-secondary studies. Many have to defer studies because families are unable to afford to continue. This is why social security measures to assist remote and regional students is a proud Labor legacy. This bill will make administrative changes to the operation of the Aboriginal Study Assistance Scheme, known as ABSTUDY, and the Assistance for Isolated Children, the AIC scheme. Both schemes are designed to provide financial assistance to students and their families, helping to remove the barriers to education caused by distance and financial disadvantage. In 2020, ABS Study Scheme assisted about 27,000 students at school, university and TAFE. Over the same period, the AIC Scheme assisted around 13,000 students, some who are living in very isolated rural and remote regions. The provisions in the bill aligns with tax file number requirements of the two schemes with those under our social security laws. Currently, under the legislation, primary school children are required to submit a tax file number. As a result of these changes, only the parents of the AEC applicants will need to submit a tax file number. Labor does support these changes, ending the bureaucratic absurdity of government agencies asking school children for their tax file number. But the legislation does not provide me with the opportunity of reminding the but the legislation does provide me with the opportunity of reminding the parliament that these two education schemes are labor legacy programs introduced during the Whitlam government and its great education reform agenda under the guidance of Kim Beasley senior and we know that labor has a great history of equality of access to education. It was a Labor government that provided financial support for students to undertake study and training during World War II. This is our legacy. By contrast, this coalition has again done nothing new for this cohort. These legislative changes are a missed opportunity to introduce real reform of the scheme's administrative processes to fast-track benefits to families that are working to do the best
for their children. Labor believes that ease of access should be a, the priority of any proposed change for a government with the mantra of reducing red tape. In this case, the government knows that families applying to access the AIC need an online application process. And in fact, Madam, um, Madam Speaker, this was one of the very issues that was raised with me by the um, online uh, isolated children's program this morning. That uh, it's ridiculous to think that there isn't a long, an online process. For these families, I mean, they are living uh, in very isolated communities, on cattle stations, on sheep stations, in rural and regional Australia, particularly uh, rural Australia. And the fact that they have to do this uh, without an online application is just ridiculous, and something from uh, you would think times gone by. So this is a missed opportunity, and it is very much uh, that about ease of access should the priority of any proposed change for a government with the mantra, as I said, of reducing red tape. In this case, the government knows that families applying to access the AIC need an online application process. This is just a no-brainer, and updating the current administrative process doesn't require legislative change, just a political will. These families also want the government to recognise that geographic isolation creates additional costs for parents educating their children from home. Well, today, as I said, I met with the parents from isolated parts of Australia, and again, there is nothing in the budget to address the concerns of these families. So you just need to reflect on the government's continued inaction on this issue and its education policies over the last eight long and tired years. And we know that this government is trying to move us to an American-style system of tertiary education. Last year, Scott Morrison passed a bill that makes it harder and more expensive for Australians to go to university. Around 40 per cent of students will have their fees increased to $14,500 per year, including law, commerce, accountancy, economics and communications, doubling fees from, for some students, particularly for those in wanting to do humanities. That's more than people doing medicine and dentistry degrees. It is a ludicrous situation and uh, I'm afraid uh, it will come home to roost and it will be the people who are wishing to pursue those degrees that will feel the pain. Fees for law, commerce, business and communications degrees will increase by thousands of dollars per year. Tell me the logic in that. He's making students go to an American style, getting students go into an American style debt, which will have lasting consequences throughout their lives, including saving for a home. What's more, there is no evidence that studying these degrees will make you less job ready than any other. There is no logic to it. In fact, according to research from Victoria University, People with humanities degrees have higher employment rates than science or maths graduates. Think about the year 12s who have had, who have had a, hell of a, a hell of a final year because of COVID. The last thing they need is the Liberals making it harder and more expensive for them to go to university. But that's exactly what's happening. It's exactly what's happening. Parents know that getting a great education is a ticket to a great job and a lifetime of opportunity for their children. Labor believes education and jobs go hand in hand. By locking young Australians out of university, Scott Morrison is locking them out of a job, their job of choice. We want every Australian to get a great education, 
no matter where they live. And that's essentially what this bill is about. To have the training they need to get a job, to get ahead and stay ahead, whether that's University of TAFE. Madam Speaker, there, then, there are, then there is the first Australian students and the Job is Ready Graduate Bill. Given enrolment patterns of universities, these changes will be more costly for Indigenous Australians than non-Indigenous Australians. It's just ludicrous. This is because Indigenous students are more likely than non-Indigenous students to enrol in courses affected by these changes. The National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Higher Education Consortium provided data in their submission to the Senate inquiry into the Higher Education Support Amendment, Job Ready Graduates and Supporting, Supporting Regional and Remote Students Bill 2020, which revealed a significant impact on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. 2018 data showed over 52 per cent of Indigenous students were enrolled in programs that will be impacted by an increase in student contributions for humanities-based disciplines. This will result in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students graduating with a higher hex debt than non-Indigenous students and moving into the workforce with greater financial burden. School funding is another example of the coalition government making it harder for Australian families to educate their children, particularly those living in rural and regional Australia. It's been, um, it's been remarkable to watch schools convert to online learning almost overnight. It is a testament to everyone in the sector. Remote learning has been necessary, but there's no doubt that it's pushing disadvantaged students further behind their peers. Even when it works well, disadvantaged students usually learn at about 50 per cent of the usual rate. That means they would have lost about one month of learning over two months of remote schooling. This is why closing the gap needs to be a priority, and this government needs to commit to resources needed to make it happen, and it certainly did not happen in the budget that we heard and have read about heard last night and have read about today. Absolutely nothing but rebadged um, money in the First Nations space, and certainly despite the rhetoric of the Prime Minister um, back at the beginning of the year, no additional money for closing the gap targets. And that needs to be said clearly and plainly. It would be nice if the Prime Minister would take educating children living in rural and remote areas seriously. The Prime Minister should be providing the resources needed to target and reverse the existing disadvantage children are experiencing, experiencing living in isolated regions of Australia, instead of holding public schools back from, the full, from their full fair funding. And as expected, the coalition government has failed once again to provide the resources needed, even in a time of plenty, to meet the closing the gap targets for education. Shame on the coalition government when the now Prime Minister, when we know, Prime Minister, that it is education that delivers and jobs and lifts people out of poverty. The latest data shows a two year gap in maths literacy between metropolitan and remote students. Our public schools educate more than 70 per cent of our regional students. But under this government, these young people are missing out. Under the Liberal school funding deals, almost every Australian public school receives far less than their fa fair funding level. The Labor believes every school in Australia should be an excellent school. No matter where you live, parents should be comfortable that they can send their children to a public school down the road that will get a and they will get a world-class education. In conclusion, Madam Speaker, can I say, every Australian should have access to a world-class education, 
no matter what their postcode. But under the Liberals, our students are falling behind, especially in rural and regional and remote areas. It is unacceptable for anyone to miss out on achieving their potential because of their background, geography, disability or any other educational disadvantage. This bill is a missed opportunity to do just that. Introduce genuine reform, reduce red tape and update and fast track access. Madam uh, Speaker, in conclusion, absolute conclusion, that is why Labor has moved the um, second reading amendment, as I said, circulated in my name. Is the amendment seconded? Member for Lyons. Yes. Uh, uh, the motion. <laughs> Thank you. The original question was that this bill be now read a second time. To this, the honourable member for Barton has moved as an amendment that all words after that be omitted with a view to substituting other words. If it suits the House, I will state the question in the form that the words proposed to be omitted stand part of the question. Member for Ryan. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy uh, Speaker. I rise to support the substantive bill in front of us, the social services and other legislation, amendments, student assistance and other 